When 1975 was complete, Harmon took his 573 home runs and 1,584 runs batted in and waited for the call from Cooperstown. It took four ballots before Harmon gained election in 1984, and he went in with a stellar class, including Don Drysdale, whom he faced in the 1965 World Series, Luis Aparicio, Pee Wee Reese, and Rick Farrell. Harmon's day at Cooperstown was marked with great humility and a poignant and emotional salute to his father, Harmon Killebrew Sr. I grew up in this small town in Idaho. My father used to like to go to the movies, and I'll never forget that a lot of times on warm summer evenings like this, uh, my father would take my brother Bob and I to the movies. <coughs> And then after the movie was over, he would race us home. He'd always win. He was a man that uh, took a great deal of pride in his children. I'll never forget, uh, we used to play a lot of ball out in the front yard. My mother would say, uh, you're, you're tearing up the grass and digging holes in the front yard. My father would say, we're not racing grass here, we're racing boys. Harmon Clayton Kilbrew Sr. would be uh, very proud today. And uh, I wish he were here. And some, somehow I, I know he is. Harmon was the first twin to go to Cooperstown. The killer got the call in 1984. Seven years later, his teammate of eight seasons in Minnesota, Rod Carew, made his journey to the hall to join Harmon. Ladies and gentlemen, Rodney Carew. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thanks so much to the Minnesota Twins and the Killerbrew family for allowing me to say a few words. 1964, growing up in New York and playing baseball outside of Yankee Stadium, I would always hear the roar of the crowd. I'd go home the next day and pick up the paper and it would say, the killer hit two out tonight. And I always wondered who this killer was. So the next day, pick up the newspaper again, and it would say, the killer did it again. So I was expecting this killer to be a, a monster of a guy. When my class graduated that year, I was invited to work out with the twins who were thinking of signing me. And I walked in the clubhouse at Yankee Stadium and I was introduced to the killer. Real mild-mannered, short, stocky guy. I was looking for Frank Howard, a guy that big. That's when our relationship start, started. 1967 was my first year here in the Twins organization. And I was more of a hot-headed, tough kid to get along with. And some of my teammates that are here tonight, Jim Cott, Antonio Oliva would, would attest to that. Boy, did those guys have their hands full with me running around at that the uh, locker room. But there was one guy in particular 
who took me under his wing by just watching him, just watching how he did things, how he carried himself, how he treated people. And I sort of fell in love with this man because I had come to know that Harmon Killebrew wasn't just a great baseball player. Harmon Killebrew had a big heart. He loved people. He loved treating people the right way. And he respected everyone. I tried to model myself after Harmon Killebrew. That's how much he meant to me. That's how much he allowed me to grow up as a person. And that's why to this day, I always give a helping hand to people that are in need because of Harmon's hard work and dedication to helping others. My wife and I had the opportunity to see Harmon before he passed away. And I sat next to his bed, held his hands, and talked to him. I wasn't known to Harmon as Rod, and Harmon wasn't known to me as Harmon. I was junior to Harmon, and Harmon was Charlie to me. And the name Junior came from my second year in the big leagues. Harmon walked up to me and he said, I can't call you Rook anymore, so I guess I'm going to have to call you Junior. And ever since then, every time we meet, he would always say, hi, Junior, or give me a hug. And I would always say, hi, Charlie, and I'd give him a hug. So on the day before Harmon passed away, I was sitting next to him, holding his hands, and talking to him. And I knew exactly what he was going through and how he was feeling. And I told him, I said, I think it's about time for me to leave now so that you can get some rest. And he kind of sat up in the bed, gave me a hug, and said to me, I love you, Junior. And I said, Charlie, I will always love you too. <laughs> no matter how many players pass through the Twins organization, there will only be one face of this organization, and that's Harmon Killebrew. Charlie, I know that you've taken a safe voyage. I love you, and I'll see you one day. Thank you.